Welcome back to the Chrono Talk channel. In this video, I will explain in the most simple way how a mechanical watch works. So I believe that the easiest way to understand is to have in mind the simplest concepts involved in a mechanical watch. Every mechanical watch works basically on the same way. It doesn't matter if it's a wristwatch or a pocket watch or a tower clock or a church clock. It doesn't matter. The, the principle is the same. What you have is a source of mechanical energy and a regulator which is the organ that keeps the time and both the source of energy as well as the regulating organ they are mechanical thus they are mechanical watches or clocks so let's imagine a very simple clock like a wall clock with uh, stones that acts like um, weights to provide mechanical energy and a pendulum to provide the timekeeping. Basically, what, what it does is the, the action of the gravity provides the mechanical energy. So because of the weight of, the, of this rock, usually is a rock or a very heavy metal, uh, it provides the energy to the, all the mechanism just by the action of the gravity. In the same way, the pendulum acts with the gravity as well. The pendulum receives an impulse in one direction and then by the action of the gravity, it comes back, receives an impulse in the other way and goes back and it keeps moving all the way until we have energy to give the impulse. And this oscillating movement is basically the best way to be a timekeeper because it's a oscillatory movement. It's a movement that is that goes back and forth in a certain frequency that in theory should be constant. So you can calculate and you can control the frequency in which this element goes back and forth. In a wristwatch is basically the same thing, but the difference is that the energy comes from a mainspring, which is basically uh, like a very thin tape of metal that is wound in its own and it, it have the because it's elastic it have um, the capability of store energy and the energy is released uh, gradually with the action of the oscillating organ and in the case of the wristwatch the oscillating organ is the escapement together with the balance wheel the escapement is called escapement because it's it permits the all the wheels to escape. So all that energy stored on the mainspring is escaping in a controlled fashion. And what controls this is the speed of the movement of the balance wheel, which is a, as well an oscillatory movement. The difference is that what makes it goes back and forth is also a small spring in the form of a spiral. So the balance wheel receives the impulse in one way until the spring makes force enough to make it goes on the other direction and then it receives another impulse and it keeps going on until you have energy on the mainspring. And then you have a lot of other cogs or wheels as we call in watchmaking to basically make the transmission between the mainspring and the escapement. And because the, the speed that they turn is extremely different because the mainspring have to turn very slowly while the escapement turns much more faster, you have to have a, a lot of wheels in between to multiply or dismultiply or divide the energy and the, the, the speed that it turns. And also because it's a watch, you have to have a way to show the time. So you need that certain wheels to turn in a determined speed. So this also means that you 
could have the mainspring and its barrel, which is, is the, 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 the first wheel of the, of the movement, you could have this attached directly to the escapement, but you should have, a, you would need to have a very big mainspring, a very big wheel with a lot of teeth connected to the, directly to the escapement to compensate the different uh, speeds that they turn. So, but this is impractical in terms, especially in terms of space. So that's why you need, also need to have a lot of wheels in between. And that's exactly what I will explain uh, from now on on the video. So what we have here is a very simple watch. It's a Mirvain, it's a Swiss watch with a hand wound movement, 17 jewels with uh, sweep seconds at six o'clock. And I choose this watch because it's, it, it's simple enough, uh, but also complete enough so I can show you uh, the simplest and also the most practical way uh, how it works and here it is uh, the movement itself and in case you were wondering this is a uh, caliber a151 also known as Aronio 151 it's a uh, it's Swiss made as I told you before it's uh, it has 17 jewels and it, as you can see here, it's it's completely stopped because it, it's the mainspring is com completely unwound. And even if I shake it a little bit, you can see that it, it tries to keep moving, but it, it, it stops right away. Even if I move the balance wheel with my finger, it tries to keep moving, but uh, it's only doing this back and forth movement because of the action of the hair spring, which is that small spring in a spiral shape that is connected directly to the balance wheel. But when we start winding it up, what we are actually doing is making the main spring to wind over itself, uh, over its center. It have a iso here in the center which is the we, we call the arbor the mainspring arbor and the mainspring is contained inside what we call the barrel so the barrel is actually right below this big wheel here you will see me referring to the gears or cogs as wheel because uh, wheel is it's the it's the watchmaking jargon we call the gears or cogs in watchmaking as wheels so this big wheel here is the ratchet because uh, the name is self-explanatory it acts like a ratchet in, in the other part of the video we will see uh, the transmission that goes uh, right below this transmission wheel the function is to transmit the movement from the, the stem and as you can see as soon as I start winding it up it it already tries to to move to work but with a very very low amplitude You have this small uh, part here that we call the click. This is actually what makes the, the ratchet uh, to work and to, and to move only in one direction and by blocking uh, when it tries to, to move on in, the, in the opposite direction. Here you can see better what happens if I, if I didn't have the click in place if I didn't have that ratchet function. You see that I tried to wind it up, but it just unwinds instantaneously. So all we have here below this first level is the, the force from, from the barrel. This is the barrel here. And the barrel is actually the first wheel. 
it's the is the first uh, gear from the gear train everything else is just to make the energy to go from here to here which is the balance wheel so visually we can see the ratchet the transmission wheel the balance wheel and the escape wheel so let's uh, wind it up fully so that that little noise that we we hear when we are winding it up is actually the action of the click itself the click moving through the teeth of the ratchet and here the main spring is fully wound and as you can see the movement is working at its full power so as you remember that I mentioned in the, the beginning of the video the escapement wheel with uh, all the parts it's a fundamental part of the the movement because this is exactly what regulates the speed in which the mainspring is unwound. The purpose is to make the mainspring to be unwound in a controlled fashion. Here I have the movement without the, the balance wheel and its bridge. So all that is blocking the energy from the mainspring is just the pallet fork in place. And I will remove the pallet fork and you will see what's going to happen. You see, this is the force of the mainspring unwinding without any control. So if it wasn't for the, for the escapement, the, the mainspring would unwound completely in a, in a few seconds like this instead of 38, 40 or 42 hours, which is more or less the power reserve of this movement. And that's exactly what the escapement does. It uh, allows the energy from the mainspring to escape in a controlled fashion, in a timed fashion. Pretty simple, isn't it? Now back with the balance wheel in place, you can see how the energy from the mainspring is now controlled by the back and forth movement of the balance wheel. As you can see, the, the spinning speed is much slower because it's now controlled by the pallet fork. Here I'm going to remove the balance wheel. And this spiral shaped spring is the, the hair spring. That is the spring that is responsible to make these oscillatory movement of the balance wheel. So the balance, uh, it actually works like a pendulum. 
but instead of using the gravity to make its oscillatory movement and its back and forth movement, it uses the energy from this small spring. And it's exactly the frequency of this back and forth movement that, that actually determine the accuracy of the watch. This is what regulates how fast or how slow the gears will move. Here you can see where the impulse to the balance wheel comes from. All these gears here, they are under tension from the mainspring. And when I touch the pallet fork just slightly, you can see that it runs to the other side because it is receiving impulse from, from the escapement wheel. And this small impulse here is the impulse that is given to the balance wheel to keep, to make it keep moving. So this gives a small impulse to the balance wheel. And when it reaches its maximum position, it goes back with the action of the hair spring. Then it unlocks the pallet fork and receives another impulse and then it starts all over again, going to the maximum amplitude position and then back again by the force of the hairspring, another impulse and so on. But this is basically the tick-tock from, from the watch, is this back and forth movement of the pallet fork.